We, we were talking about music, we were talking about football, we were talking about media and social. Um, we, we started to get into the kind of storytelling sort of mm. side of things, which I think is, is, is important. Mm. And we'd explored how through the work we, we're doing as lecturers, we're actually nurturing people to tell their story through yeah. their work. And we were, we were getting onto critical, critical thinking and critical mm. analysis. How would you define critical thinking and critical analysis? The critical thinking, uh, well, well, you know, sometimes it's very difficult for, for, for youngsters to think critically, uh, especially in a world where a lot of them tend to take what they read or see or hear as that's the way it is. You know, so it's part of, I don't like saying, you know, getting people to think out the box, but certainly getting them to look at other alternatives. You know, two sides of an argument, maybe three, maybe four sides of an argument, different perspectives. You get them into that sort of, you know, you, you start to use that terminology, you mm. just feed it in. One of the things that I, I often do in the classroom is that you and I are sitting here, but we're not having the same experience. Mm -hmm. Literally because I'm sitting here looking at you and you're sitting there looking at me. Right. So there's two mm. unique perspectives mm -hmm. on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we've got three cameras picking up three ah. different perspectives ah. as well. And I used to say to the students, that if you've got 20 students in the class, that every single one of them has a different view, mm -hmm. but they're bringing different mm -hmm. baggage mm -hmm. with them, depending on mm -hmm. what happened to them before they got mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that becomes an interesting way of exploring does, the kind of storytelling side of things. It does. And then the, so the next is sociology. They can go in then and identify with either Marxism or functionalism or neoliberalism or, or, or socialism or whatever. And they can see... Yeah, you know, I think that way. I like that ideology or that perspective, or I don't like it, you know. And you can start to 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 look at. Yeah, you know, I try to point out, for example, that Marxism isn't what happened in the Soviet Union, Soviet Union, and that that Marx would turn in his grave if if he had uh, had been alive to witness what happened or what happened in other countries like you know Cam Cam or Cambodia and 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 that, you know, and. Well, thinking about the Americans at the moment, they, they've kind of gone against um, communism, but they've also attacked socialism because they see it as Nazi Germany, the Nazi National Socialist Party of Germany. Yeah. And again, you kind of go, no, no, that their ideologies were totally wrong yeah. compared to... I think it goes back to the American education system, the way that the kids are taught, their, their worldview, they don't, they're not taught alternatives. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes when my students are reading, I come across... Uh, Bill Chambliss, who's an American Marxist, and they're going, wow, mm. are there Marxists in America? You know? Well, I was on an exchange in 2007 with the college, mm -hmm. and that led to a film, and mm -hmm. I met an American communist. Mm -hmm. um, but when you started to look at the social structures of mm -hmm. some of the small towns, mm -hmm. especially in North Carolina mm -hmm. and the likes of, you began to realize that they were working on a socialist model mm -hmm. as yes, opposed to yes. what yeah. they thought as, as capitalist. Yeah. Yes, you know? um, our... John, who has married an American lady, um, Ashlyn, um, they met on uh, Study USA, uh, Warren Wilson College. And if you look up, uh, it's, it's, it was in North Carolina. And if you work up, look up Warren Wilson College, you know, you'll find that it has got, let's say, a socialist ethos to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like students were expected to work in the college, work on different pro uh, various projects and so on. And it was really all for the beauty of the college and that, you know. Um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, and again in America there's no political alternative. Mm -hmm. there, uh, I mean, I uh, often thought that Democrats and, and uh, the Republicans are really two sides of the one coin. People don't, you talk about America being a democracy. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, um, when they're elected to the Senate and House of Representatives, you know, they'll vote probably along the lines of who, who, who they like. You know, there doesn't seem to be any real party affiliation. You know, um, Trump was elected probably, I would say, about, I would say, maybe about 30% of people who had voted for Obama mm -hmm. previously. You know, yeah. so there's not that, you know, we, in, in, in England, for example, you would have lifelong members of the Labour, you know, voters yeah. for the Labour Party, you yeah. know, and no matter what Labour did, they would still vote for them and that, you know, because they couldn't, um, 
constant of voting conservative, you know, um, or vice versa, you know. But that's that's what you don't seem to get in America, you know. And you get, I know that uh, when I was visiting America, there were lots of people who were activists who were, yeah. who were basically wanted to be active in, in push, you know, exploring things and mm -hmm. trying to have their voice. Mm -hmm. But quite often they were then belittled yeah. uh, to the point where some of the people I met had been doing it so long, had been mm -hmm. basically crucified mm -hmm. in the press, crucified yes. locally, mm -hmm. that they felt that they weren't welcome in their communities. Yes, anymore. but I, I, I still feel the only reason Obama got elected was because the system allowed him to be elected. If the system hadn't wanted to be elected, they would have stopped his election. Yeah, that's what I think. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's it's an opinion, but it's I like to do, I like to um, support my my opinions as best I can. Mm. And um, you know, when you look at Kennedy, um, his assassination, you look at Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Malcolm X, people who were sort of threat to the establishment. Mm -hmm. And ha I mean, what was interesting is during the time of election of Donald Trump, mm. the, the, the far right sort of Christian groups were starting to support him on uh, the likes of YouTube. Yes. Again. Um, and, and it was quite sort of shocking to see that, you know, they'd been criticizing everybody else and all of a sudden they weren't criticized. But it's because they saw him as, as a lone wolf, an underdog. Mm -hmm. And yet in many ways, he, he's not. He's part of the establishment just as he's much. Surely. As a, as, he's as got money. Else. I mean, see, right, Mills, the American yeah. uh, sociologist. Sure, you heard of him. Yeah. Mills, Mills talked about elite theory. Yeah, yeah. And, and basically, what elite theory is that the guys who run the country aren't elected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's, you know, and it comes down again, in in, in capitalism, it comes down to money because money equals power. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Trump. Well, is as much part of the system as, as anybody else. Well, globalization, if you're talking about sort of sociology again, the globalization, you know, we've seen how the world has basically been carved up into three blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Australias and the Oriental, that area has been blocked off. The Americas have been blocked off and Europe had been blocked off. Uh, so, the, so that, you know, which is why it's surprising that. Um, and Africa, you forgot about Africa as well. Well, yes, yeah, so and Africa, yes, yeah, so that's a kind of fourth sort of area but they'd already divide up what they would get from each of those and who would run which sectors mm -hmm. within those different areas mm -hmm. and nobody else could really get in mm -hmm. which is where it's surprising the britain has mm -hmm. decided to go off on its own mm -hmm. almost as though they're blind to that which i don't think they are but there's something going on <laughs> to... i'm i'm sure you know <laughs> way back to when i was doing sociology it was lecture once told me it all stuck with me he says you know there are six country six companies in the world yeah. Which own everything. Yeah. And that's it. You know, yeah. but that was sort of surprised me about Brexit, Brexit, you know, when the result, I, I, you know, I think, you know, there should be another referendum because the campaign, as far as I can see, was fought on racism. Mm -hmm. And people were told lies yeah. by was prominent it? politicians. And I think the results should be declared non null and void. I'm sure there were civil servants in the morning that the results came through in White Hall saying, oh my God, what have we done? But um, uh, never thought I would say it, but thank goodness for the House of Lords. We have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching. Thank you.